Hi everybody and welcome back to another airbrush video. In today's video we are going to be doing a beginner's guide into air pressure, air pressure settings, what it's all about, what's the working pressure. I see a lot of posts saying what air pressure do I run my airbrush at. So what I'll do is I'll give you a little talk through about air pressures and then I'm going to set an easel up and I'll show you working pressures with paint so you can get a good view and a feel for what sort of pressures you need to be running your airbrush at. So when you have your airbrush set up, you'll be running it from a compressor and usually on the side of a compressor, you'll have something like this, which is a air regulator. You'd have a water trap coming out of that. You'd have an air line going in one side and you'd have another line, say, coming out, which would go to your airbrush. On the face of these are numbers which go on the outer, go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the bar pressure on then numbers there. And then the inner numbers, that's PSI. So when I usually set the airbrush up, I'll be running on PSI. And I usually set it to about 25 on the main line coming in and have that permanently set at 25. If I'm using the Creos, like the PS, 270 or the PS771, they've got MAC valves to the front and this is a little air adjuster where you can dial your air in on the front of the brush and you can bring that 25 PSI, you can take it down. I'll demonstrate this in a minute with the easel and some paint in it. So a normal running pressure for an airbrush, I would recommend about 25 PSI in the main line so you would clip your airbrush on, that valve's fully open, and you'd be running 25, and that's the sort of sound you'd get at 25. And then when you dial this in, as you can hear that, you can bring that air pressure up and down with the Mac valve. So that's what I'm running an airbrush at. If you're running a spray gun, I would then move to the outer numbers on these dials. And if you're clear coating, say you've got a big gun like that and you're inking that up, I'd be running that on clear coat at two bar, which is on the PSI, that would be about 30. 30 PSI around there, looking at this. Two bars, about 30 PSI, 29, 30 PSI. So these sort of guns do take a lot more pressure. You could put the same pressure through this, but because you're coming down to a smaller needle and nozzle setup, the airbrush doesn't tend to use as much as you're using it. But when you use a big spray gun, because you've got a bigger needle and nozzle setup in these, these tend to force the air out more. So you could be running the same pressure in bar, but this would disperse it faster and your compressor would be running a lot quicker because this gun can disperse that air pressure a lot quicker than what an airbrush can. So what I do is I'll move on to the next step. I'll hook the airbrush up. I'll go through it with you with the PS270 and then I'll put the PS290 on which takes a little bit more pressure. You're probably looking at about 30 PSI on that because that's a bigger needle setup. You need that little bit more air pressure coming in. So I'll see you in the next step. Well, we've got the PS270 set up. I'll put some blue high flow golden acrylics in. And this is at 25 PSI. So as you can see, it pumps that paint out at 25 PSI. Now if we do this and turn this valve in, you can hear that air pressure now. That's really dropped. You're probably looking at about 10 PSI there. And it's doing the same dots, but it's breaking that paint up because you need that little bit more air pressure. So you are where that's soft fades on the outer, 
when you drop your pressure down with that same paint consistency and you're dropping it down it starts to speckle out slightly and that's where you need a little bit more air pressure to get it to this or you'll thin your paint down so if you thin your paint down and keep that air pressure that it's at now these will become a lot cleaner when you spray so if we knock that back up that's 25 again and that atomizes better so it's a good way of judging what pressure to run at you put your paint in set it at 25 psi go in and look at your paint on the atomization of the dots and see how soft it is around there and then if you want to come into detail just start bringing your air pressure down try your dots again if it starts to break up and speckle start to thin your paint that's just starting to break up it's not as clean as the other so ballpark 25 if you want to start going down for detail getting really fine detail down drop your pressure down test your paint on a piece of paper if it starts to break up heavy spits around the dots start to thin your paint bring your paint consistency down 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 and that's when you can start lowering your pressure down and working at very low pressures if you're running slightly thicker paints bring your air pressures up to back to 25 and you'll get nice consistent flow with your paint so that's the ps 270 running at 25 and this is golden high flow acrylics i've just dropped a couple of drops of water in this so it's not a very thin mix it's could do with a lot more as you see when i went down with that psi and dropped it it just needs that little bit more thinning but it's just a good gauge when you come to work get yourself a test panel put it to one side and it's a way of checking your paint consistency especially if you're working on detailed stuff when you go down drop your air pressure and that will sort that out so that's the ps270 what i do is i'll hook the ps290 up and we'll crank the air pressure up just a little bit more well i'll show it you at 20 five we'll drop some paint in this is straight out the bottle so this is at 25 psi and as you can see it's very speckly around the outsides i mean it's getting the paint down but this needs to be thinned out slightly just to make that paint atomize a little bit better and there you go i've just dropped a little bit of water in that and that's atomizing that really nice now and that runs really nice at 25 so the ps290 can run really nice at 25 psi as you can see there and we can drop the pressure down because i've got a gauge here so if we wind that in that's not the pressure down and that is still a little bit speckly so you could drop the paint consistency down a bit more thin it and it would atomize like this nice and soft just going a bit grainy here but that's the ps2 290 running at 25 thin your paint down slightly if you want to put a thicker paint in the the um, ps290 bring your pressure up to about 30 35 working pressure on these you can go up to about 40 on these so the thicker the paint the bit more air or if you want to run it on low just thin your paint down and you'll be fine so that's my little test on the ps290 on pressures on this one and the air pressures on the ps270 i'll 
spin you back round, give you a little talk through. So there you go, there's my little test for you on air pressures, on working pressures. Uh, 25 PSI is basically what I run all my brushes at. I keep the main line on 25 and then when it's coming up to the brush, if I'm using this one or the PS771, I'll use the Mac valve on detailed stuff and I can just dial this in. But if you're a beginner, set it at 25, put your paint in, give it a try. If it's really grainy, when you're doing a dot and look at the outside of the dot, if it's grainy on the outside and very speckly, start to thin your paint down. If it's not at 25 PSI, you're good to go at working pressure. And then when you're coming in for detail and you're going right down, you don't really want to be blasting 25 PSI because you can then spider web it. When you're going really close, you need to be dropping your pressure down. So just think, put it in the back of your mind. If you start lowering your pressure, start thinning your paint. If you're putting thicker paint in, increase the pressure and you'll atomize it a little bit easier. So that's my working pressures on that. You've seen the PS290, which is a trigger airbrush, which is this one. We ran that one at 25 PSI and I just thinned the paint out very slightly and that performed absolutely spot on. These can work up to, I think it's to about 40 or 45 PSI and these, these can run at. So same again, using this, thicker the paint, take your air pressure up, um, if you're going like really close and you're dropping your air pressure, just make sure your paint's a little bit thinner and you'll be fine, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this little video on air pressures for airbrushes and just keep it in mind, 25 PSI, you're good to go. So I just want to say a big welcome to all the new subscribers. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget, click that subscribe, press that notification so you don't miss out on any more upcoming videos on Dreadfx Custom Paint, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.